We just got our first look at the Acolyte, and there is a ton to discuss, from new characters to connections to the greater overall Star Wars universe. I'll explain everything you need to know going into the two-episode premiere on June 4th. I say this is our first look at the Acolyte, but in fact, some of this footage was previously shown behind closed doors at Star Wars Celebration. I wasn't there, but I saw the leaked trailer, and the first 30 or 40 seconds of this trailer is fairly similar, at least conceptually. Alright, so to get the very basics out of the way, the Acolyte takes place in the High Republic era. Do you need to read the books to watch the show? Certainly not, but there will be some crossover, more than I expected, in fact, as in this trailer, we actually see the character of Vernestra Rowe. Vernestra, who is a green-skinned Miriolan, like Barris Offy, is about 16 at the beginning of the High Republic, so we can see that she's quite a bit older here. Anyway, the trailer starts with us being introduced to Master Soul. According to the Star Wars data bank, which was actually just updated as this trailer dropped, Master Soul is a wise, respected, powerful Jedi Master, strong in the ways of the Force, who is going through emotional conflict. I think it's probably not then a coincidence that he's teaching his students how eyes can deceive a person and perhaps he himself has bore witness to something which has shaken his faith or at least confused him. Of course, this is also a phrase we've heard from other Jedi like Obi-Wan in more basic situations. But it's a trailer, so think about the message they're trying to convey in the brief amount of time. Interestingly, it looks like Fernestra may actually be at the back of the classroom during this session. Maybe it's one of those situations where someone walks in to interrupt the teacher with big news that they have to play off in front of the students. What's interesting, however, is that her description on the Star Wars data bank entry says that she is now an elder Jedi master. I don't know if elder is sort of a relative term indicating her status or she's actually older than she looks. We do know according to the creator of the show that the Acolyte takes place about a hundred years before the Phantom Menace. If we take that literally, well, Vernestra would be quite old, approaching a hundred years. We don't quite know how Miri all in age, so we'll have to see. Otherwise, I would have assumed that this was like 150 years before the Phantom Menace. Either way, the aesthetic of the High Republic are certainly still at play. I assume we'll learn why the era ended, but everything from the ceremonial dress robes to the look of the Jedi Temple, it's pretty much what I expected reading the novels and also seeing artwork. Before moving on from this scene in Master Saul, he does have a female apprentice as well. Her name is Jackie. She is visible as well later on in the trailer. The next shot we get is of a new character known as May. The databank gives very little about them, simply that May gets swept up into a sinister mystery, one that puts her into the center of a conflict in unexpected ways. I don't think May is the Acolyte, although she may be. If she is the Acolyte, I don't think that she's going to start off the show as someone with Sith or Dark Side intentions. She's definitely got kind of some bad vibes about her, but my guess is that she starts off as either a thief or someone just opposed to the Jedi in another way, and then the Dark Side and perhaps the Sith find and make use of her. We do see her walking through one of the new Star Wars arches, I'm going to call it. They love using this design. Obviously, there's Jakku, but everywhere. They gotta walk through things like this. I'm not even going to guess what planet they're on, but I will admit, I don't find it particularly interesting. This is a bit of a criticism, but it's also a very Disney Plus looking planet to me. But the darkness starts to build through the trailer. One of the children seeing visions of fire, while others, you know, more traditional Jedi stuff. Then, of course, we're introduced to Trinity, or rather, Indara. Star Wars Data Bank is also so fairly sparse when it comes to her description. It says simply that Master Indara is a Jedi Master of great physical and mental skill. She obviously is taking up somewhat of a Trinity-like character with a focus on combat and martial arts, but she also will most likely be leading the investigation into the big central mystery which starts off the show, a series of Jedi murders. And if you haven't seen the poster for yesterday, by the way, pretty damn cool. We do see her fairly easily dispatch May, and the trailer is almost implying that May is is the one doing the assassinations, but we see her fail both times. Like, she attacks Indara, not successful. She attacks Sol, not successful. Either way, we get a look at several planets, including an icy one, and maybe this is Kashyyyk. I will say, I don't think any Star Wars visual media ever has done a good job of capturing the Kashyyyk that I imagined back when I was reading Star Wars novels. Maybe, I guess, the Star Wars holiday special. But for those wondering, no, this is not Buryaga, the Jedi Knight, the Wookiee Jedi Knight from the 
High Republic. This is Kel Naka, who the Star Wars databank calls a Wookiee Jedi and a loner who lives a solitary life. Obviously, something brought the rest of the Jedi to see him, and the trailer implies that it's the series of murders. Perhaps he is killed shortly after the scene, perhaps he stumbles upon another Jedi who's murdered, or perhaps it's completely unrelated. One thing I do think we'll see throughout this show is the idea of different Jedi, especially in this era, having unique skills. In Dara, clearly combat, maybe at some point they'll seek out a Jedi who has skills like psychometry to help them along with the investigation. I gotta say though, I really like Saul, his vibe generally. We see him interrogating someone the subtitle simply calls the convict. Again, lazy kick, not gonna do anything to him. And I also do just want to highlight this scene of Vernestra Rowe entering a room in the Jedi Temple. For one, she uses the Force. Completely funny, I would do that too, rather than touching the door switch. But we can also see just aesthetically how the Jedi Temple is different than in later eras, specifically in the Phantom Menace and the prequel era. Everything is more vibrant. The Jedi themselves have this very beautiful attire and something is going to happen for them to fall into the state we see them later. Not to say that they're in a bad state by the Phantom Menace, but the High Republic to me, the Jedi have almost had this naivete, this hopefulness that is going to somehow be destroyed. So this individual is called Kimir. We only get a brief shot of him in the trailer. He is a former smuggler who now makes his living as a trader, procuring unusual things and enjoying a life of leisure. That to me seems like someone either an acolyte of the dark side or the Jedi would probably be interested in meeting if a series of murders were taking place. There are many young Jedi introduced throughout this section. One of them specifically is named Yord, who is a Jedi Knight and Guardian from the Jedi Temple. He is an overachiever and a rule follower. His need to be a by-the-book Jedi can cloud his mind. Interesting that they use the term Guardian. To me, that harkens back a bit to some of the stuff we saw in Knights of the Old Republic, for example, where Jedi kind of have these roles they slot into, whether Guardian, who focuses on combat, the Consular, who focuses on negotiation and mindfulness, and the Sentinel, sort of just a mix between the two. And while we are talking about Jedi, I do want to take a second to loop back to give more details about Vernestra Rowe. Her databank gives a brief summary of her life during the early High Republic novels. She, at 15, is the youngest Jedi Knight in a generation, a prodigy. She took on a Padawan who died during the attack on Starlight Beacon, and since then has actually pulled away from the Order to, and I quote, heal herself. Also worth noting that she's a purple-bladed lightsaber that can also function as a light whip. To me, that actually sort of validates what I said earlier about her seeming like the random person who comes into the classroom or workplace to bring news of the story to another main character. Not unlike, say, Obi-Wan and Yoda in Attack of the Clones. One of the other new characters is Annie Saya. She actually enough is actually, and I quote, the leader of a coven of witches who value their independence in the preservation of their beliefs and powers. She actually has the title of Mother, and it's unclear to me whether she's meant to be a Dathomiri style witch or from some other coven or order. Either way, given what's going on in Ahsoka right now, pretty interesting connection. Either way, she doesn't seem to be like objectively bad. Rather, she's counseling the Jedi, I think, a bit more on the nuance of the light side and the dark side. Anyway, the final few shots give us a hint at the ultimate villain, I think. We see someone standing on what looks like Octo, but I don't think it is. It's just probably a random planet. Just like the snow planets, not probably the one from the Mandalorian episode one. They just look similar. Then we see a group of Jedi, including some I've already mentioned, having a run-in with this dark side user, seeing the red lightsaber being confused, then get blown off their feet by the force. I think it's very possible that these Jedi are killed because one thing this show has to balance is the active nature of the Sith versus what we know from the prequels that the Sith are thought to be extinct by the Jedi Order, and this isn't something that they can hand wave away. This is a pretty important element of the Sith and their return. Overall, I thought this was a pretty good trailer. I guess if I were concerned about anything, it would be the visuals. I also would have liked to get a bit more of a look at the overall bad guy, but aside from that, I hope the show doesn't fall into the trap that we do see with the eight to six episode Disney Plus specials, where it feels less like a show and more like a long movie. But let me know your thoughts on all this and more down below.